Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's take a look at the Files app on your iPhone. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So the Files app may be one of the most important apps on your iPhone. It's basically the equivalent to the Finder but on your iPhone you can use it to access files, both local files and files in iCloud Drive. You can also use it to access files that are located in other cloud systems like Dropbox. The Files app is built into iOS so you should see it on your home screen somewhere. If not you can always go to the App Library and search for it there. I'm using iOS 15.2 here on the iPhone but the Files app hasn't changed too much recently. And you should see a similar set of functionality if you're using the Files app on the iPad as well. So when you go into Files you go to where you were last. So this could be at the top level here but it also could be in Recents which is just a list of all the files you've recently accessed. You could also be down one or more levels. So for instance you may be looking at something like this and you could just use the Back button all the way at the top to get to the top level. Go to Browse and then you'll see this level here. There's a search box at the top and several different sections. You've got Locations which shows you the primary locations where files are stored. This is kind of the equivalent on your Mac to different drives. You might have your internal drive. You may have an external drive. You may have a network location. And you could have iCloud Drive as well. Then you've got Favorites which you'll be able to customize. Under that you've got Tags which we'll look at later. So under Locations the default things you should see are iCloud Drive which is probably where you have all of your files. Anything stored in iCloud Drive will be available across all your devices. So maybe your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac. You'd be able to see anything in iCloud Drive stored on one of those devices in all of them. But there's also On My iPhone and this is the equivalent to locally stored files. Files that are not saved to the cloud at all. They're only on the iPhone locally. If you're like me you never store anything in here. Then you see a special section for anything that you've shared with somebody else. And also a trash can or bin called Recently Deleted which shows you files after you delete them and they'll stay there for a period of time before they're deleted forever. Now you can customize this using this button here at the top. Here you can see Edit and there are things here you can turn on or off. For instance if you don't want to see On My iPhone at all you could turn that off. In addition if you've installed apps that are associated with other cloud services like Dropbox then you'll see something here where you can turn that on. When you turn that on you could see Dropbox listed here and you can access all of your Dropbox files there. You don't have to use the Dropbox app to get to them. Although these custom apps could have more features than what you see here in Files. If we go into iCloud Drive you're going to see exactly the same folders you would see on iCloud Drive on your Mac. And you'd be able to go into any one of them and kind of navigate around like you would expect if you were using the Finder on a Mac. So I'll go here into the Projects folder and I see a bunch of files here. And I can stick with this icon view but it's probably more useful to tap here and then switch to List View. And then List View allows you to see one item per row and you can scroll up and down easily. You can also see more information such as the last modified date and the size of each of those files. You may sometimes see a cloud icon like this here on the right. And that tells you that while the file is available to you its contents are currently stored online not locally. So when you go to open that file it's going to need to download it first. If it's a small file you may not even notice the delay. Anything without that is cached locally. So while it's part of iCloud Drive in this case the contents are already here on your iPhone ready to go and it should open instantly. Now you can tap to open a file here. So let me tap on this one and since it's a Pages file it's going to open the Pages app. And it's going to, in this case, download the file from iCloud and then open it up. Then I can go into Edit Mode here in Pages and I'm working with it in Pages. If I go back to the Files app I'll see there are files here that may not have an equivalent app on the iPhone. For instance here's a file that was created in TextEdit and there is no version of TextEdit on the iPhone. So when you tap to select this it actually shows you a preview of this file in the Files app. If I look here I could see I'm still in Files. So this allows you to preview files, things like PDFs, text files, and images without having to open up another app. If I scroll down here here's an image and I tap on that 
you can see it's going to download it and it's actually a video and I could view it here. Notice that I am still in the Files app here. So you can actually view videos, you can play audio, and you can view photos and pinch and enlarge them and all that inside the Files app. So Files isn't just a file browser. It's also a preview tool allowing you to view the contents of many different types of files. As a matter of fact if I wanted to open a Pages file but just view it in the Files app without going to Pages I could tap and hold and then select Quick Look right here and I'd be looking at it inside of the Files app without opening a new app. Now much like with Preview on the Mac you can open a PDF or image file and you can use markup tools to draw and add items to the PDF or image. So in a way the Files app in iOS is kind of a combination of the Finder and the Preview apps on your Mac. Now there are a whole bunch of other file functions that you can do if you tap and hold on any file. You've got Get Info and it will show you a ton of information for that file including a little preview there at the top. You can also choose Rename to rename a file. and You see you can just type the name there. You can compress or archive the file into zip format just like you can in the Mac Finder. You can duplicate the file. You can copy it and then once you have a file copied you can go to a new location in the Files app and you can paste it or use Move to move it there. You can also delete it right here or you can use Share to share in a variety of different ways. So sharing could be something like using AirDrop or sending in an email or a message. It could also mean sharing it using iCloud there creating a share location that you can then send somebody the link to. Sharing is also a way to open a file in a different app than the default. So if you've got a document that normally would be opened by some app you can now go through the list here and see what other apps can be used to open that file. You can also drag a file to move it. So let's take this file here. I'm going to just tap and hold until I can drag it. Go up here to the top and you see it will activate that button there. And I can actually go up and then go into another folder like the Desktop folder here and I could drop it there. Now I have lots of options when viewing files. You can tap here and we saw before how you can switch between Icon View and List View. You can also change the order in which things are sorted. So I've got them sorted by name and you can do it ascending or again to do it descending so you can switch between those two. Then you have Kind, Date, Size and also the tags it uses. You can also use Groups and it will group things like this. So you've got Folders and you've got Documents, Images, and once you turn Groups on you do have Group By down here and you can choose other things like Group By Date or Size. You also have the ability here to use Select and this allows you to select more than one file at a time. So you can select several files for instance and once you have those selected you can do one of the things at the bottom. So you can share those files. You can create a new folder with them. You can duplicate them. You can delete them or even more things right here at the bottom. Another option here is to create a new folder. So that's how you would create a new folder in the Files app. And then you have this handy thing right here where you can start a document scan using your iPhone's camera right here and it would save the scan that you take right to this location in the Files app. Now back at the top level here you have the ability to add to Favorites. Right now there's just the Downloads in Favorites. And if I go there it takes me to my Downloads folder. Actually if I go back it won't go back to that top level. It will go back up one level to iCloud Drive which is where the Downloads folder is located. Now if I wanted to add something else to Favorites I would just go to that item first. So let's go to my Documents folder and then to that Projects folder. I'm going to tap and hold and I'm going to select Favorite. Now when I go back to the top level here you can see Projects and Downloads are both there. If I tap and hold I could drag them up and down to rearrange them. I could also tap here do Edit and this is where I can remove an item from the Favorites. And the last section here is Tags. So tags work just like tags in the Finder. I can tap on any one of these here to see files that I've tagged with something. If I want to tag a file I would go to it. So let's go to a file here and let's tap and hold and you can see I've got tags. And now I can select a tag like Purple. I can add a new tag by tapping there and typing. When I'm done I can go back to the top level and if I want to see all the files that are tagged purple I can tap there and you can see that one is there. You could also of course use Search up here to search for things. You can search for file names. You can search for contents of some types of files. You can search for tags. So you see here I've searched for Test. 
and I could leave it at that and it will give me files that have test in the name. But I could also tap here and look for things that have the word test inside them. And I can also tap here to select tag. So in this case there is a tag called test and these two files have that tag applied. There is one more item under this called connect to server. And that allows you to connect to file sharing on your local network or even a remote network if it's set up that way. Now I mentioned before that you can compress files in the Files app. The Files app also works to decompress. In the Downloads folder in fact I have an archive here that's a .zip file and if I tap and hold that you see I can uncompress it there. I also can tap it once and it will do that so you can see it has uncompressed it and there are two files in a folder now. You can also tap and hold and notice that if I select Quick Look it comes up with just an icon there and telling you the size and all that. But you also have preview content. So you can tap there and actually preview the items that are inside of a zip file before you unzip it. And that's kind of handy especially here in the Downloads folder which is the default location for saving files when you're browsing the web and sometimes downloading email attachments. They should end up here in the iCloud Downloads folder and you can preview what's inside the zip file before you uncompress it. Now I like how you see aspects of the Finder in a File Save or File Open dialog on the Mac. So when I open Pages here you can see I'm in Pages yet this looks a lot like the Files app. And I could dig down into iCloud Drive and find a file here and open it up. And then I, if I go back up from the actual document you can see here I'm at that location. And then of course when you're in the Files app there's also Recents down here which sometimes is the only place people go. This will just show you your most recent documents right here. So it's easy to be able to find what you've just been working on or were working on yesterday or the day before by looking at Recents. I find of course it works best to look in List View and see them shown that way. And then you could just open up those files. If you use iCloud Drive a lot you may want to leave a lot of the file management to your Mac doing it all there and only really use the Files app on your iPhone or iPad to access the most recent files from Recents. But of course if you don't have a Mac, if you've chosen to use your iPad as your primary computing device or even your iPhone then the Files app is going to definitely be something you want to be very familiar with. Know how to use so you can keep your files all organized and know where everything is. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.